Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the It's Joel channel. And well, I'm gonna cut straight to the chase as you've seen from the title of the video. It's only bad news for the Jaguar today. So unfortunately, today is the very last day that this car has a valid MOT certificate. And so one thing you have to do in the United Kingdom is have an MOT inspection done on your car every year. It's a number of requirements, normally safety related, that the car has to be checked on and get through to be able to be legally driven on our roads. Unfortunately, when I took my Jaguar for its MOT test a few days ago ahead of this deadline today, well, it wasn't exactly the result I was expecting or, or hoping for, let's, let's put it that way. In my hand here, I have what is the MOT certificate or the refusal of an MOT test certificate because of course, unfortunately, the Jaguar failed. And this is the first time I've ever had an MOT certificate where the page of things that it's failed on and the advisories it goes on to a second page. So just to give a little bit of background then, I bought this car, gosh, I don't know when it was now, but at least three or four months ago now, and it had around 102,000 miles on the clock. As we're sitting here, it's on around 107, just over. So in that three or four months, I've put on around 5,000 miles, which is relatively considerable for a car like this, but also particularly considerable for this one, because if you actually go through the MOT history on this car, and you, you can do so if you want to right now. You can put in my number plate and have a look, and you can also then see a detailed description of all the things I'm gonna go through on this list. But anyway, if you go through the mileage history on the car, you'll see that there was basically a big gap, I can't remember exactly when it was, but between 2012 and where we are now in 2023, I think essentially the car's only done around 10,000 miles, or at least until I bought it. So. The car had been sat for a long time, and so when I bought it, I was fully expecting to need to do some work. And that transpired that it needed quite a lot of cooling work done. Now, it's questionable whether the garage I used were very good. And actually, there's a bit more on that, and I don't think they were very good at all. I ended up spending about a £1,000 on essentially getting some of the major components of the coolant system replaced. And I have to say, since then, in the 5,000 miles or so that I've done, and you saw me do the Land's End to Nest Point trip, about 1,000 miles over a couple of days where the car has been, well, it was absolutely faultless. So in fairness, that 1,000 pounds or so I spent on the car up till now has been well spent because mechanically, although not completely mechanically, the car has been absolutely faultless and genuinely a joy to drive. I never really initially gelled with this car, but I have to say, after I did that, Land's End to, to Nest Point trip, I really did sort of gel with it in those couple of days and, and I've, I've, I've grown to love it. And it makes the news that I've got in my hand here just a little bit more sad. So it was no illusion to me that it was very likely the car was not going to pass the MOT without any work done. As I said, it hadn't really been driven for 10 years. The car's 24 years old now. So obviously it was, it was most probably going to need some stuff refreshed to get through. However, the one thing I didn't want it to fail on, which it has, and I know lots of you will not be surprised by this, but it is unfortunately rust. Now, I had a similar issue with my uh, first Range Rover, which was the green one, the petrol car. Absolutely loved that car. And that had quite a large area of rust in the wheel arch, which is a, a pretty common uh, area or very common area for those L322s to develop rust and it was so big in fact that it failed the MOT and subsequently I decided to move the car on. Now, in hindsight, knowing a little bit more about rust, I wish I hadn't sold that car. I think I should have kept it and, and, and saved a bit of money and, and got the, the rust addressed and kept it, but that's a separate issue. Now, this car, we've got a couple of points that it's failed on in terms of rust and both are at the rear subframe mounting area. So the line here on the MOT certificate says, and I'll show you, subframe mounting prescribed area excessively corroded, significantly reducing structural strength, near side rear and also off side rear, which is a separate line. And in brackets, door sill corroded and hold within 30 centimeters of subframe mount. So although not surprising, it's a shame that that's the case because I think this is quite a, a common place for rust on these cars, and that's that's fine. It's not 
too much of a surprise, I suppose. It's just a shame that it has happened to this one. And that's not an area of rust that I can realistically look at. I don't have any relationship with a garage that looks at Jaguars per se. So I haven't had the ability or the opportunity to sort of go to a garage and have a look at the car myself under a ramp or have someone have an honest conversation with me about the condition of the car. Which brings me on a little bit to the garage I use. Now, hear me out and, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I've used the same garage, which I spoke about negatively before because they messed me around a bit with the coolant. This car ended up having to go back, I think three or four times within, well, essentially a couple of weeks to have coolant issues addressed. Now, the problem with that was that every time they fixed one thing, they called me and they said, it's all fixed, ready to pick up. And I said, are you sure? Can you do a pressure test? Can you make sure it's all fixed? They said, yeah, yeah, it's definitely, definitely fixed. And then a couple of days later, the coolant would all delete itself from the car and it would be back in the garage. Now, should I have kept taking it to the same place? Probably not. But I'm not the most confident person on the phone. I really... I don't like ringing up different people and trying to get them to help me with, I, I don't know. I just wanted to keep taking it to the same place and I probably shouldn't have done okay because they weren't very good. Now, unfortunately, what also that meant that they weren't particularly interested in helping me meant that they obviously didn't really ever do an inspection on the car. I think most garages should probably do, and tell me if I'm wrong, most good garages that want to keep you as a customer, surely if I, I brought you an old car like this, they maybe would do a, a health check on the car first and, and, and could have said to me, by the way, Joel, before you spend a thousand pounds on fixing coolant, you're going to need some welding done and you're going to need a lot of suspension work done for the car to get through its MOT in January. And there was no indication of that. Maybe I should have asked them to, to do that. And, and this might just come down to me being a little bit naive and, and not, uh, not ruthless enough at, at asking for what I want. But nonetheless, it's a little bit of a shame that the garage I've spent about a thousand pounds getting coolant and, and things like that sorted on the car done. Uh, they're the same ones that did this MOT and then called me almost happily to say that it was basically for the scrapyard, this car. The guy on the phone said that I should scrap it and that it's not worth um, dumping any more money into it was, was the words that he said, which I thought was quite, well, I just found it very annoying because I've spent a thousand pounds with them getting other things sorted. And here he is a month later saying, oh, you need to scrap that. It needs too much work done. So tell me if I'm being unreasonable, but that left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. And so I've decided to withdraw the car from that garage, which we have done. So I'm sat in the car on my driveway. And tomorrow it's booked into a different place, place that should be a Jaguar specialist. They sound nice. And I'm going to get a second opinion on the MOT with them and get a quote on the work because it's potentially gonna be quite an expensive fix. In fairness though, the only other MOT failure points other than the rust that I just spoke about are ball joints. We've got track rod end ball joint dust cover, excessively damaged or deteriorated, and that's near side rear and off side rear. Anti-roll bar linkage ball joint dust cover no longer pre prevents the ingress of dirt, near side rear and off side rear. Suspension arm ball joint dust cover no longer prevents the ingress of dirt, near side, rear and off side, rear. So basically all the ball joints at the back of the car need replacing. And that makes sense because I've heard a little bit of sort of rubbing coming from the back um, sort of after I did that big, big trip. And um, in terms of minor defects, we've just got a registration lamp that's inoperative uh, on, on the rear number plate. So that's a very easy fix. And on the advisories, there's a little bit of corrosion on the door sills. So a little bit more of, of rust issues. Slight exhaust leak as a tyre issue, although I've actually got a new set of tyres for this car, ready to go on. And uh, a brake hose, and onto the second page, a couple of other minor things, such as suspension arm pin and a suspension arm pin. So let me talk you through my thought process with this car. Now, I bought this car for YouTube. I bought this with the mind of making videos with it, doing a sort of mild restoration on the car, uh, enjoying it, you know, bringing you videos like I did with that big fuel economy challenge, and then moving it on and, you know, making a little bit of money out of it and getting something a bit more expensive next. So my thinking is that I don't want to spend too much more money on this car, but 
I do not want to scrap it. It is too good to scrap, despite what this says. And, you know, it obviously needs some welding and, and, and whatnot. It's a gorgeous car. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And these things, they're, they're few and far between. So what I would like to do is get it through the MOT, get everything on this list sorted and, you know, have it in, in great condition. And also lots of you did remember that I said that my fiance, Katie, we're getting married in March and she really wants to turn up to the church in this car. Her dad used to have an S-Type, so she's always been fond of them. And actually her dad is particularly fond of, of S-Types too. And so wants to, you know, drive her to the church in this. So my desire would be to get it fixed and keep it on the road and give it the sort of restoration that it deserves. From a business perspective, I can't spend too much more on this car. I think if the quote that comes back is more than a grand to get it through the MOT, I'll have to have a bit of a conversation with myself as to what to do next. So I'm not quite sure when I'll be able to next give you an update on this car, but tomorrow as I'm filming this, it goes into this Jag specialist. And I'm hoping they will look at it with a bit more of a enthusiast's perspective because the way I see it is it's a, a bit of a classic. They don't make these anymore. And, you know, I really, the last resort would be to scrap it. I'm hoping that him being a Jaguar specialist might see these cars in the same sort of light. You know, he might want to encourage me to get it fixed. And that's sort of what I'm hoping for from this Jag specialist. And also hoping that it can be done within reasonable cost. And hopefully then we can be back to making some more videos with the car. And Katie, my fiance, can turn up to our wedding in it in March. I mean, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? So there's uh, the lowdown on the MOT refusal um, or the MOT failure. Obviously, I don't want to be just sat in my car on the drive telling you things about how it's gone wrong. But that's the reality of it. And uh, I wanted to keep you guys updated. So... That's it really, I don't really have anything else to add. Of course I want this car to survive. I hope that this place tomorrow is helpful and they tell me some good news. And if I ever want to have another car on the channel, then I'm gonna to have to be really sensible with what I do next. So please do feel free to comment anything below. Let me know what you think about my experience with the first garage as well. Am I being a bit of a drama queen by saying that all oh, they should have told me not to get work done or I don't know am I am I being out of order there or am I right to feel a little bit disappointed by them so if you like this car and you would like me to keep it get it through its MOT and see more videos with it give this video a thumbs up and that'll give me a nice indication of how popular it is amongst you guys also if you're not already hit that subscribe button because I would like to hit 100,000 subscribers in 2023 it's been a long time coming. I'm trying lots of different things with the content this year and I'm hoping this can be the year that we hit 100k. So do help me out. If you're sitting there and that big red subscribe button is looking at you in the face, I really, I really appreciate it if you just pressed it. Anyway, thanks again for watching and uh, I will update you steadfastly as, as quickly as I can with this car, hopefully with some better news. But nonetheless, I'll keep you uh, apprised of what's going on. Thanks again, everyone. I'll see you very, very soon.